You know who I feel sorry for? People looking for inspiration in the goddamn Bible. Like, not people who are just, like, at some down point in their lives and they reach their Bible hoping it'll lift them up. Fuck those people, right? Opening the Bible at random and coming away with a passage about foreskins is what they deserve. What's more, you do that enough times and it's going to lube you right up for some atheism. But the ones I feel sorry for are people where that's, like, their job that aren't priests. Like, you just, like, imagine, like, a single mom who's Christian. She takes a job at a greeting card company or whatever, and they say, like, hey, you're Christian. Why don't we have you work on the Bible passage a day calendar? Or something. And now she's got to look through that book and find passages that aren't just shit. Yeah, you know, I got to thinking about this the other day as I'm watching a movie for Cam. There's this scene where the protagonist is sitting at his kitchen table and he's looking through these these Bible quote cards. Right? He's got a whole fucking deck of them. And what we see in the movie is he flips one from the very front to the back. So what we need is a grand total of two cards. That's what we see in the film. The one in the front and the one that was behind it. And this is a movie. You're not stuck with whichever two come up randomly. You can go through the entire deck and find the two that most speak to you personally or the ones that best encapsulate the themes of the movie, whatever. Here's what they land on. The first one is, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. That's Romans 8.28. And everything is possible for one who believes. That's Mark 9.23. So yeah, both quotes boil down to believing in God hard enough gives you superpowers. And what's amazing is that if a Christian like took issue with the way I summarized that, they'd have to do so by turning it into something less inspirational. In, in what they would see as the most generous interpretation, the first one boils down to hang in there, and the second one is a paraphrase of you can do it. The best these filmmakers could come up with are the throwaway banalities from an MLM's Facebook page. And maybe you think, okay, sure, Noah, those quotes suck, but maybe it's just because those were bad filmmakers. And to be fair, they were bad filmmakers, some of the worst we've ever encountered. But this is one deficiency I can't blame on them. I Googled it, trying to see the best that they've got, and this really is it. The, the first quote I got on the first list I got was John 16, 33. It goes like this. In the world, you will have a tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. <laughs> Fucking what? That's that's God saying, sure, she's going to go wrong for you, but at least I got mine. <laughs> and, and again, if we're inclined to like the most generous interpretation, it's Hakuna Matata without the catchy song. But all three quotes ultimately amount to no more than life is hard sometimes, but at least you're Christian. And lest you think I just lucked out and got a shitty one to start. Nope. The second quote on that same list was just a paraphrase of the same dumbass. At least you have the right religion thought. Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So yeah, just a more arrogant way of saying the same thing. Who the fuck slips in a compliment to their own hand's righteousness? Also, the way he phrases that makes you wonder what kind of depraved shit he gets up to with the left hand, no? I mean, why would you specify? Otherwise, it was righteous as my hands, but no, he specifically said his right hand. Now, now look, in the Bible's defense, it was written thousands of years ago. It's been translated and retranslated and retranslated so many fucking times. There's no reasonable expectation that it would have much, if anything, that could serve as genuine inspiration or even genuine good advice to a person in the modern day. Ethics, like all other fields of human understanding, have advanced quite a bit in the last couple thousand years, right? Any rational assessment of the book would admit that by the standard of the time it was written, it was really fucking good, both from a literary and moral perspective. But qualifiers like reasonable and rational don't belong within a thousand feet of a conversation about the Bible. Yes, I'm holding the Bible to an impossible standard, but the impossible standard is being the thing its adherents say that it is. And look, there are a lot of things that Christians say their Bible is that it actually isn't, right? They say it's moral or historical or accurate or a thing that they've read in their lives. It's none of those things. So it might seem a little petty to go after a lie as inconsequential as it's inspirational, but that's the in. That's the just the tip of their religion because nobody who doesn't have a religion is out there looking for one, but everybody's looking for inspiration, even if they already have some. Right. So if you're trying to give away Bibles and trick people into reading them or better yet, pretending that they've read them later, nothing is going to do more for your cause than spreading the rumor that the book is inspirational. 
Of course, that's a fucking lie, as I think the Internet's favorite examples have proven. But Christians wave those pesky facts away by pretending that there's some magical context that suddenly turns that drivel into profundity. So if you really want to refute the claim, you have to read the entire fucking Bible. And who the hell is masochistic enough to do that? I, I mean, other than us.